Section 9.4 continued to multiply rational expressions. Let's start out with an example of multiplying two fractions together. There's two ways to actually accomplish this task. First, I could multiply across the top or multiply the numerators together to get 36. I could then multiply across the bottom or multiply the denominators together and get 48. Then I could see that this can simplify by a factor of 12. 12 into 36 gives me 3. 12 into 48 is going to give me 4. Therefore, the product simplified is 3 fourths. Another way to do that is to cross simplify. For example, if I have 9 sixteenths times 4 thirds, I can cross simplify. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 3 times, 4 goes into 4 once, and 4 goes into 16 4 times. Now I can just multiply across the top or multiply the numerators and get 3 times 1, which is 3, 4 times 1, which is 4, after multiplying the denominators. And again, I end up with the exact solution of 3 fourths, just two different procedures to get to the same solution. The choice will be up to you of which procedure you would like to use to solve when multiplying rational expressions. When multiplying rational expressions, we want to do the same as we did when simplifying them. We want to factor each polynomial completely to determine restrictions and to help simplify the problem. In this example, I want to multiply the rational expressions and I want to find any restrictions. Let's start with the restrictions. As you can see, if c would equal 0, my denominator would be 0 and that would give me an undefined expression. Therefore, that's not possible, so I have to have c cannot equal 0. And that would be the same for a. If a equals 0, again, I would have an undefined situation, so we're going to label that as a cannot equal 0. Let's simplify the numbers of each fraction first, and then we'll take care of the variables. So if I have 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 24, I get 8. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 15 three times. Now I can multiply across the numerators, which gives me 8 times 1, which is 8a b squared c. And the denominator, 1 times 3 is 3. c cubed times a squared would be a squared c cubed. My values of 8 third is simplify, so that would just stay 8 over 3. And I simplify my variables. A over A squared leaves me an A on the denominator. There is no B in the denominator. That leaves me B squared in the numerator. And C over C cubed would leave me C squared in the denominator. 8B squared over 3AC squared. Again, I want to begin with determining my restrictions. Here, P cannot equal 0. M cannot equal 0 and n cannot equal 0. If any of these situations occurred, my expression would become undefined. Therefore, those are my restrictions. Let's again begin by simplifying my numbers. So 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 18 six times, 7 goes into 7 once, and 7 goes into 28 four times. Now what I want to do is to Multiply across the numerators. That's going to give me 4 times 6, which is 24. m cubed. n squared times n squared is n to the fourth. p squared. Over 1 times 1 is 1. p times m times n. p m n. Now let's simplify the variables. 24 over 1 is still 24. m cubed over m is m squared. n to the fourth over n is n cubed. 
and p squared over p is p. Of course, putting these in alphabetical order for my solution. Again, I want to multiply my rational expressions, and I want to find restrictions. As we said on a previous slide, I want to factor completely any polynomial. So let's begin. I have x minus 5. That is factored completely. 4x plus 6, I can factor out a 2. That gives me 2x plus 3. 6x plus 9, I can factor out a 3. That gives me 2x plus 3. And my denominator, I can factor out a 3. Gives me x minus 5. Now I can find my restrictions by setting each polynomial in the denominator equal to 0. And when I do that, that's going to give me 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. That, when I solve, is going to give me x equal to a negative 3 halves. Therefore, x can't equal a negative 3 halves. If it does, that creates a situation in the denominator where that would be 0 and make the expression undefined. And finally, x minus 5 on the denominator equal to 0, x equal to 5, and x can equal 5 because if it does, again, I would end up with a 0 in the denominator and create a situation where my expression would be undefined. Now what I want to do is cancel out my common polynomials, x minus 5, x minus 5, 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3, that leaves me 1 times 3, which is 3, over 2 times 3, which is 6. I could have simplified the 3s here. Since I didn't, I'll simplify here, which will end up with 1 half. In other case, if I simplified here, I still would end up with 1 half. Again, I want to multiply these expressions, and I want to find the restrictions. Since I have three polynomials written in the form of x squared, x, and a number, I want to get this in the form of x squared, then the number. So let's just rewrite this. That's going to give me x squared minus 4x minus 5 over, and that will give me a negative x squared plus 25 times x squared plus 2x minus 15 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now let's factor it completely. When I do that, I'm going to get, set of parentheses in the numerator, x and x, and this will break up into minus 5 plus 1. Again, I can check that by foiling. x times x is x squared, negative 5x, plus x is a negative 4x, and a minus 5. Here I want to factor a negative out, and I'll just show this on the side. If I factor a negative out of this, that's going to give me a negative x squared minus 25. So in this situation, I can rewrite my negative And then know that that is a difference of squares. So that can be written as x plus 5, x minus 5, times, continuing with the factoring, the second numerator, x and x. And that would be plus 5, minus 3, and the denominator, x and x, and that's going to be minus 3 plus 1. Now I need to determine the restrictions, so I'll set each polynomial in the denominator equal to 0. That's going to be x plus 5 equals 0. x equals a negative 5, so x can't equal a negative 5. x minus 5 equals 0, x equals 5, x can't be 5, x minus 3 equals 0, x equals 3, 
Therefore, x is not allowed to equal 3. And x plus 1 equals 0, making x a negative 1. Therefore, x can't equal a negative 1. So here are all of my restrictions. x can't equal a negative 5. x can't equal 5. x can't equal 3. And x can't equal a negative 1. Now what I can do is cancel all the like polynomials. x minus 5. x minus 5. x plus 5. x plus 5. x plus 1 x plus 1, x minus 3, and x minus 3. So it looks like everything cancels, except I have to remember 1 times 1 is 1, but that's a negative 1 times 1. So that's 1 times 1, it's 1, negative 1 times 1, which is a negative 1. When I simplify, my solution is a negative 1. Again, I want to multiply find any restrictions. I want to factor completely. So when I do that, in my numerator, I'll have 3x and x. And when I break this up, that's going to be a minus 4 and a plus 2. And I can check that. 3x times x is 3x squared. Negative 12x plus 2x is a negative 10x minus 8. My denominator still remains 2x times, here I'll factor out a negative 2, and that will leave me x plus 4, and my denominator is a difference of squares, x plus 4, x minus 4. Finding restrictions, 2x equal to 0, solve, I get x equal to 0. Therefore, x cannot equal 0. If it does, then that would become undefined. x plus 4 is equal to 0. x equals a negative 4. So x cannot equal a negative 4. And x minus 4 equals 0. x equals 4. Therefore, x cannot equal 4. Negative 4 and 0. Let's continue simplifying. Here I have the x plus 4's cancel out, the x minus 4's cancel out, and I'm left with a negative 2 times 3x plus 2 over 2x. And as you can see, I can still simplify. So that would equal, when the 2's cancel, a negative 3x plus 2 over x. On this example, I want to simplify and find any restrictions. Therefore, I still need to factor completely. Even though I have this negative exponent in the denominator, I want to start with factoring completely, then we'll take care of that exponent. So in the numerator, I'm going to factor out an x. That's going to give me x squared minus 1 over, I bring down my x, my x minus 3 to the negative 1 power, and then I have a trinomial that I can factor, x and x, and that will be minus 4 minus 3. Now let's continue factoring and take care of that negative 1. I'm going to have my x in the numerator. And since this is x minus 3 and outside of the parentheses is a negative 1, that tells me that this has to go to the numerator. So I have that x here. Bring up my x minus 3. That will give that a positive 1 exponent. And now I can do difference of squares. x plus 1, x minus 1. And I have x times x minus 4, x minus 3. Now I can take care of my restrictions. I set every term in the denominator, or polynomial in the denominator, equal to 0. So therefore, x equals 0. That wouldn't be allowed because the whole expression would become 0 in the denominator, making it undefined. 
x minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, x is not allowed to be 4. And x minus 3 equals 0. x equals 3. Therefore, x is not allowed to equal 3. Therefore, I have my restrictions. x can equal 4. x can equal 0. And x can equal 3. Now what I want to do is simplify, crossing out my common polynomials, so the x and x can cancel, x minus 3 and x minus 3 cancels, and that leaves me with x plus 1, x minus 1, over x minus 4.